See these? Uh, if you want to use those, move up and down with your joystick or you can use your... Uh, you Note to future self, do not slam two gin and tonics before doing videos. Bad idea, man. Let's go for three. All right, folks, here's the fire, gin and tonic, and one backpick cartridge. Little bit of backstory. Uh, about a month ago, it was my buddy Ryan's birthday, and uh, we were talking, and he has like this really awesome game room, and he was using this on his Commodore 64, and I was very impressed with it. Uh, number one, load times, super fast. And then number two, uh, it, it seemed to be able to save things and load things correctly, which is something that my emulated 1541 can't do. Obviously, I can do it on the real one, but not on the emulated one. So I was pretty impressed with the features on this, and it does have a number of features, and I will go through them. Uh, but anyway, uh, push came to shove. Usually in our group, you tend to get a little bit lit. Uh, and uh, I, I got drunk, and drunk me sent me this as a gift. I really love drunk me. But uh, anyway, yeah, that, it, it's something I do. I get lit and send myself a gift, and that's what happened here. Back bit. Let's open it up and take a look. Okay. So, some basics about it. Here's the cartridge itself. It is 3D printed. Reset button. Space for a micro SD card. And we'll go through that later. This is for programming. I don't know if you can see it. Wait. Yeah, yeah, you can't really see it. But what this is, it's just basically a, uh, a little pin for resetting it. But it's shaped like a cat. Pretty sweet. Cable. Uh, for doing upgrades and updates to the firmware. Very nice little advertisement here. There's a cartridge, VIC-20 adapter. Yes, you can use it with the VIC-20. And the 2-bit, and I don't know what that is, so feel free to educate me in the comments down below. Last thing included, of course, is this awesome quick reference guide. I say it's awesome because it is useful and that is because it shows you how you can get into the different modes. Uh, note the F5 key, note the F1 key. The F1 key will allow you to go into presentation mode which is useful if you're demoing your Commodore 64. Makes it really easy to get into games. Uh, I'm kind of curious how many people out there actually use their Commodore 64 for anything other than games. I only use mine for games now, but I am curious because I know there's a few diehards out there that absolutely use it for word processing, etc. If you're out there, let me know in the comments down below. All right, another thing. Shows you how to upgrade the firmware, where to go. All that information is here on the card. So pretty awesome. All right, so everything's here. All we need to do is grab an SD card and load it up with games and check it out. Let's do that. Warning radiation at unsafe levels. All right, so I've found a micro SD card. Uh, wait, wait, it's uh, 16 gigabytes, which means it can hold like all the Commodore 64 games. Yeah, let's do this. Alrighty then, my 32 gig card <coughs> 16 didn't work out because it failed right when I put the disc in. I mean, seriously, it couldn't read it. And that's what I get for using cheap Chinese stuff. Uh, anyway, I got an 8 gig one full of my old stuff right here, marked old stuff. And it will work just fine because the Commodore 64 has super small files. That said, this could have handled 32 gigs, no problem. I think that's the max it can handle, actually. Anyway, let's hit format. And notice that this is set to FAT32. 
32, not NTFS, do not do NTFS. I don't think it supports XFAT either. Just be safe, do the FAT32. Commodore 64, quick format. There we go, disc formatted. And I'm gonna close this out. And then I'm gonna go over here to my back bit stuff. Oops, that's not the right folder. Oh no. There we go. There's my back bit folder. And this has got a pre-made by back bit set of ROMs that will run on here. So I'm just gonna drag this sucker right in there. You can use your own ROMs. It's not a problem. All I have to say about it is keep it clean, folks. Don't uh, don't make a mess and don't leave a bunch of those little text files in there because it does get those. I had uh, had one of my uh, ROM sets that just has like text files all over the place about where you downloaded it from and made a big mess. So keep it clean. That's all I have to say about it. All right, I'm gonna drag these right in here. And then once that is complete, I'm gonna pop it out put it in the back bit. I think you can guess what's gonna happen here. All right, so I'm gonna pull out the SD card, put it in this cartridge here, if you can see, see that little notch? Here's where the SD goes, and there, it's in. Let's try it out. Thumbs up, comment, and subscribe, or I will go Skynet on your butt. Alrighty, so I'm booted up, and here's my list of games. Uh, all I have to do is use my joystick, move up and down, press the fire button to load the game. If it's a single disc game, it works really darn well, and I don't have any problems. By the way, you can use the keyboard as well. Okay, so the problems start when you have multiple discs, and it doesn't support that amazingly. However, in some cases, you can use a D81 file. If you find a D81 file, there's a, there's a fair chance that it will work. What that basically is, is it's combined the multiple disks into one disk and has tricked it basically into knowing when the disk is swapped. And then it will work that way in some cases. Not all though, but some. You can also, if you are feeling brave, try to combine them yourself and What's really cool is this thing's got a tool built into it to actually try and do that. So um, it, this may or may not work. So I'm just throwing this one out here, but I'm going to just select these real quick. Dupe, dupe. Okay, now I'm going to hit F7. And I've got the option to combine. It will attempt. Even when it does work, however, <laughs> it may not work work and it's combining the discs right now sometimes you'll get a, a little red error if you get a red error you can't exit it just hit the power button on the back not the power but the reset button there we go we got a combined error so this one didn't work but I can hit the reset button on the back and boom it will start up again as if nothing ever happened now if it does combine, you'll get this file right here. I'm going to press it and try it. In some cases, it will partially work. In some cases, it won't work at all. And in some cases, it'll work just fine. There was a combine error on this one, though. So, But, as you can see, at least it started it up. And there we go. Um, not 100% sure whether this will even 100% work, but there it is. I combined them. All right, some other features. Hitting F1, I can create a uh, directory. I can go into presentation mode. Uh, that is a mode where all these features are locked out. The F buttons are disabled. It's great for if you're setting up a kiosk or something, you just want to demonstrate the games and you don't want people messing around with it, you can put it in that mode. A uh, quick, uh, quick note, if you want to get out of that mode, 
hold the button on the back of the cartridge while you're starting it up, keep it held. Once it turns black, the screen turns black, let it go, it'll be back in a normal mode. Pretty cool. Rip from disk. Yes, you can rip games from disk if you've got a real game in your disk drive. Note that copy protection will foil it. it has a real-time clock. It does that for the save function. You can change the startup colors. And then uh, the freezer is experimental. I guess they're working on uh, kind of a save state type of situation there. Uh, if anybody knows more about this, let me know. There wasn't a whole lot in the forums about it, but uh, pretty cool. And Ultimax was an earlier version of the Commodore 64 in Japan, and you can emulate it. All right, let's go back. All right, so here we're going to take a look at a game I saved. And uh, in the case of Zork 1, it actually crashes after I save, so I haven't figured what's going on with that yet. It's just this version though, I did another version of Zork and it worked fine, so I don't know, it's the one that came with their image. Uh, seems to mess up after saving, but who knows. Haven't tested it heavily. Anyway, so I've saved my game, it does support game saves. I can look right here, and that was hitting F5. I can see the uh, saved version. It keeps the original. so. If I did trash it, I can go back to the original. And there we go. Zark will load. Eventually. By the way, in this case, I found that telling it you're using a 1541 drive, it doesn't work. And sorry about the creaking. That's terrible. Alright, anyway. I think that's all I really have to show you in the menus. Let's just test out a game. By the way, there's Zork. Nothing like a little hard hat Mac. Come on. Ooh. Every once in a while that rivet will get me. Level complete. Alright, let's talk a bit. Retro Rob plays everything. So, what are my final thoughts on the backpack cartridge? Also, why am I wearing a Santa shirt in the middle of summer? One of these questions will be answered here. All in all, I think the back bit is a great deal. At $100, it's not just a multi-cart, and you can sell a multi-cart for $100. It's also a tool cart. It does more at the same price. That's really great. By the way, new features are also being added on a fairly regular basis, like that freeze feature, which is still under development. Again, I don't know a lot about it because it's not quite documented yet. It's got a very active developer, active community, and yeah, I have no complaints about it. By the way, you can check them out at backbit.io. Also, if you enjoyed this video, you can check me out on Twitter as well, at RetroRob, that's a zero in the middle, uh, and of course, Always, thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in a couple days. Bye.